You can't talk your way out of this one. That's what a federal judge in Chicago told the silver-tongued former infomercial king Kevin Trudeau today before ordering him off to jail. It's not Trudeau's first time behind bars, but this ruling follows a long game of cat and mouse between him and the U.S. government. After determining he misled customers, the courts had ordered him to pay back $37 million in restitution. But Trudeau claims he doesn't have any assets and cannot pay. So last month, a federal judge appointed a receiver to investigate his spending. And when he used an Australian bank account to pay for, you know, basic human needs like cigars, liquor, and $180 haircuts, the judge wanted answers. As did my Nightline co-anchor Bill Weir when he found Trudeau living large in Switzerland a few months ago for our series Nightline on the Lookout. I want you to welcome the person that's responsible for bringing us all together. Six months ago, we went on the lookout for an ex-con who sells hope. Kevin Trudeau. And the people who love him. It wasn't that fantastic. Are you excited? Say yes. Yes. Get on the phone and call and get mega memory. They believe in him despite decades of incredible claims. It's virtually a facelift in a bottle. And government warnings that he cannot be trusted. You can lose all the weight you want effortlessly. They trust him, even though a federal judge decided he bamboozled so many people into buying his weight loss book, he should pay back $37 million. And when he says he holds secrets from wealth and happiness long guarded by the world's elite 1%, they give their hearts and minds and hard-earned dollars. How much have you spent? Maybe $10,000, maybe $20,000, a lot. But here is the interesting part. While teaching people how to get rich, Kevin Trudeau says he is broke. I gave away everything I own. But the authorities say that is a charade. And earlier this summer, the hammer came down on this self-help empire. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Before we get to the latest developments, let's start at the beginning of our search for man and money. A wintry day in Chicago, a place called Gold Coast Bentley. While claiming to be on the brink of bankruptcy, Mr. Trudeau drove this very car last year. Ooh, a $230,000 Continental Flying Spur. We rented this rolling hunk of luxury as a little surprise for the mystery guest we're about to pick up at O'Hare Airport. Hey, Abe. Hey, how we doing? What's up, man? Bill Weir. Bill, nice to meet you. I'm Abe. Good to meet you. Yeah. This is Abe Hussein, smitten with a Trudeau sales pitch. He says he spent thousands. But then he says he stopped believing in Kevin Trudeau. Abe was working at a restaurant in Kansas City when he bought a set of Trudeau self-help CDs, which came with an enticing offer to join something called the Global Information Network, or GIN. They said that 30 billionaires in royalty from across the world formed GIN. Yes, you heard right. Trudeau says this club was formed by a secret council of 30 billionaires, royals, and world leaders a mysterious cabal willing to sell their secrets of success to whoever will pay $1,000 down and 150 bucks a month. This group of people includes several members of major royal families, Skull and Bones, Trilateral Commission. But of these 30 supposed masters of the universe, only one name has been revealed. Yep, it's Kevin Trudeau. Did you ever wonder who these mysterious members of the Jinn Council were? I did. And the anonymity of the council allowed Abe's imagination oh, to so run wild. Board. You know, I was thinking that Will Smith, I thought maybe Arnold Schwarzenegger was, but I'm like, well, maybe they're the Jinn Council. I thought Ron Paul for sure was. <laughs> While Ron entry to the so-called inner circle cost $75,000, Abe joined Jinn at a much lower level. And after about a year, he says he became disenchanted and quit. You want to go by the uh, the gin office? That sounds like a perfect day, actually. This is very humble office settings for a council of secret billionaires. Yeah, definitely. Oh, it's locked. It's sitting right there. I'm sure they can hear me. Yeah. You know who else is interested in what's happened inside this building? The guys in this building 
in Washington, D.C. You run the enforcement division of the FTC. Do you get to carry a gun? I do not. Knife? Um, I don't get to, nor do I have to carry either a gun or a knife. Karate? No, I, I have Mace? none of those skills. Nothing. I am very good at sitting on the couch at night and watching TV, <laughs> though. And watching that late night TV back in the 90s, they discovered a fresh faced man with a demeanor so likable, you'd never guess he'd served nearly two years in prison for fraud. And when they saw him hawking baldness cures and miracle pain tape, and this to me is a miraculous breakthrough, and cancer prevention pills, they sued him twice. Without admitting guilt, Trudeau paid two and a half million dollars to sell and promised not to lie about his products. But then he became a best-selling author, wrote this diet book which recommends high colonic enemas and off-label injections and a near starvation phase of 500 calories a day. No deprivation. But when he went on no TV hunger, and said no all of that was easy. It's the fastest, easiest, most effective way to lose weight, period. The FTC pounced. A federal judge ruled that Trudeau's ads misled thousands of customers and ordered him to pay back 37.6 million dollars. He claims he's insolvent, he can't pay. You believe he's hiding his money? The evidence all demonstrates that that's exactly what he's doing. For our next stop, we asked Abe to swing the Bentley by one of Trudeau's alleged residences, a cozy 14,000 square foot mansion. The FTC says he lived here with two chefs and a butler, all while claiming to have barely a penny to his name. So you weren't at your office and you're not at the house. Where should we look next? Ah, Zurich. Now this is a place where people really know how to live. Make a turn to the right. Okay, Swiss miss. Will do. But how can a poor soul like Trudeau live in one of the five richest cities in the world? Maybe they have a shelter. Oh, but wouldn't you know it, on the gorgeous banks of Lake Zurich, on a street named for Beethoven, stands a pre-war apartment building with a familiar resident. Now you gotta wonder, how can a guy seemingly thumb his nose at a $37 million judgment, live this large, and get away with it for this long? Well, here's a possible clue. Someone else was sharing his credit card account. Someone who enjoyed shopping at Chanel, Christian Dior, and agent provocateur. A young, pretty Ukrainian named Natalia Babenko. It's this way. Excuse me, are you Kevin Trudeau? Yes, I am. Oh, well, I can't believe it. I watch you on TV all the time. Wow, look at this. Who do we have here? I'm Bill Weir from ABC News. You're you looking Bill? very dapper. What are you doing in Zurich? I live here. What are you doing in Zurich? Uh, looking for you. Of course you Actually, are. Actually, yeah. Well, I'm really not interested in talking with ambush reporters. I got, I got a couple questions. I'm dying to talk to this you. This is ambush journalism. Really ambush nice. journalism. But then begins to make the case that he has no control over gin. The Caribbean? Not my customers. I am just a member of this club. As for right. Abe back in Kansas City, well, Kevin dismisses him as a whiner who broke club rules. Some people join, have the wrong idea, and quit, and are crybabies. You told the FTC you're broke, mm -hmm. right? I don't have any assets, correct. You don't have any assets as your ring blinds me. He says that big mansion back in Chicago was corporate housing. Bentley, a corporate car. And nearly $2 million of credit card charges in the last couple of years? Business expenses, mainly paid for by companies owned by that Ukrainian lingerie shopper named Natalia Babenko. But here's the twist. She also goes by another name, Mrs. Kevin Trudeau. How would you characterize your wife's involvement in these companies? That's, that's her business, and that's really not part of this interview. Does she run day-to-day -day operations? That's her those? business, and that's, you know, we're private companies, and that really has nothing to do with this interview. Why don't you want to talk about your wife? Please leave the family out. Are you using gin as a personal piggy bank to live a really lavish lifestyle and avoid paying this judgment? 
Well, I think that's a legitimate question, but even if I was, what's the point? I'm screwed, I can't own anything for the rest of my life. So, I'm not going to start a company and put it in my own name. It'd be dumb. And I certainly can go to friends, relatives, neighbors, or whatever and say, listen, you start a company and I'll help you out. And there's nothing wrong with that, there's nothing illegal about it, and guess what? It ain't my asset. That argument may put you in jail. We'll see. I have an insane, ridiculous $37 million personal judgment against me because I wrote a book and said the diet was easy. Bill, I don't have $37 million hidden someplace. If they can find $37 million, pop the champagne, good luck. Three months after that interview, a federal judge ruled that the Global Information Network and all of Natalia's supposed companies were really controlled by Kevin all along. Last month, a court-appointed receiver was put in charge of the whole empire, froze all assets, and could soon begin liquidation. And as for Kevin, well, until he convinces the judge he's being candid and truthful, he'll be spending his nights in a Chicago jail. It's a long way from that Zurich lifestyle, and it'll be tough, but maybe he can find the strength with a little self-help.